In this video, I will show you how to use 3D models and animations in Microsoft Word. Let's get started. So here I am in my Word document. I'm working on this Animal Kingdom overview paper, and I would really like my students or whoever's gonna look at this document to be able to have some nice 3D visuals as part of the document. So to do this, it's pretty simple in newer versions of Microsoft Word and in the Office 365 version of Word. Just go here to the Insert tab in the upper left, and here in the Illustrations group, look for 3D models. You can click that and choose stock 3D models. It's gonna open up a library full of lots of different categories of 3D models. There's an anatomy section, there are some vintage cartoons, and some of these have animals in them. Low poly models, like that panda, and some cats and dogs and insects, just all sorts of good options for me to choose from. I'm gonna start here in the animated animals category though. So I'll just click there, and it gives me a few different animals to choose from. So I would like an animated rhino. So I clicked on it. How about this bird? We've got what looks like a little wolf cub. We've got some fish, an octopus, a bird, a shark. Some really good options. I'm Going to click insert. Now this may take some time because I selected seven 3D models. In most cases you'll want to start with maybe one, maybe two, because it does take some time to load these in. But now it's almost done importing those models and here they are. They're ready and now I can click on each one one at a time. I'm going to click away from the group and then back on the group and it looks like I've selected the shark and I can click and drag and put that shark in the appropriate place. Also the bird, the octopus, my wolf cub, another bird, some fish, Fish. I can just separate these out and of course I would put them in the appropriate place in the document. Once I have them in the document all I have to do is click on this little handle here to rotate the image so that it looks the way I want it to look when the students or other viewer looks at this document. I can make these images bigger by using the handles in the corners and then I can just click and drag to place them in the right place and again use this orbit or rotate handle to rotate the object to the view I want it to have. Now, in addition to these options of making the objects bigger or rotating them around, in addition to those options, we do have some others. If you click on one of these models, you get a 3D model tab and a ribbon, and to be honest, this hummingbird is driving me crazy. So I'm gonna go over here to the selection pane button, turn it on, and then I'm gonna turn off the crazy hummingbird and maybe the octopus and a few other things so that I just have the rhino, at least for now. So with the rhino selected, again, I have the 3D models tab and it gives me a bunch of different options on the ribbon now. I have scenes that I can choose from. So by default, this rhino is pretty much sitting there, but he moves his head a little bit Bit. but if I switch the scene to scene two, he's gonna be walking. And again, I can change the angle of that so I can see his hoofs or whatever those are called. I can have him walking toward the document viewer or away or whatever I want. There is another scene I could choose if I want to, a running rhino, that's terrifying. It's also possible to reset the model to the state it was in when I first imported it. And then I love this option here. There are 3D model views. So with just a click, I could make the rhino face the viewer or face to the right. I could get a top down view, a rear view, and there's many other options. If I click here, I get a few more, or I could just click this little button to see all of the possible views that I can select from for this rhino. Now, of course, I can customize any of these. I can just click on the rhino and use this rotate button again to customize it even more. Other options we have on the ribbon are alt text. When you click on a 3D model and then click alt text, it tells you what the thing is that you're looking at. This is the alt text that helps this document be more accessible to other people. I'm gonna X out of that now. We do have other options as well, like position. I could have the rhino be behind the text or in front of the text or move the text to the side because the rhino is there. There's all of these different options to choose from. We also have wrap text, which is similar. So I'll just put him behind the text. We can bring the rhino forward or send to the back and that's mostly useful if there's another visual element in the document. So just to illustrate that, I'm gonna input a picture. I'll just go to 
some stock images, and let's add a cow to the equation. So now that I have this bull in there, and I also have a rhino, and I'm gonna make the bull also be behind the text. But now that I have these two elements, I can click on the model, and with the 3D model tab and ribbon, I could bring forward the rhino, or even bring it all the way to the front, and now he's in front of the bull. So that's what these options are for. Bring forward, send backward. There are some great other options as well, like I can align it with other elements of the page. I can also turn on pan and zoom, and then use this button here to easily make the rhino bigger or smaller in my document. Now, in addition to the rhino and the other 3D models that are animated that I showed you, we do have many other 3D models that may not be animated, but still could be very beneficial and helpful for the students to maybe activate their background knowledge of different animals or different concepts. And so adding some visuals like this into your document may very well help your students or the other people looking at your documents to get a better sense of what you're talking about. Now, when you're finished working on your document, let's look at some of the options you have. I'm gonna hold Control and tap P for print, and you can see a preview of what my document will look like when it's printed. It will have those 3D models in the document. Obviously, the animations won't play, but at least when I print this out, the 3D models will be a part of the printed page. They just won't look quite so 3D, and you won't be able to manipulate them, obviously. In addition to printing, I could simply save a digital version of this document. To do that, I'm gonna do a save as. So I'm gonna open up to save this document as, and I'll save it to my downloads folder in this case. Save, and then I'll close the document. Next time I open up the document, or if I provide this document to my students, it opens up and my animations work, my 3D models are still there and can be manipulated. So I hope this video has been helpful to you and that you'll find some ways that you can use 3D models, including animated models, in your Microsoft Word documents. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this tutorial to be helpful. If you did, please like, follow, and subscribe. And when you do, click the bell and you'll be notified when I post another video. If you'd like to support my channel, the best way to do that is to become a channel member. But you could also click the thanks button below the video. You can support me through my Patreon account or by buying channel merch, and you'll see information about those options in the description below the video. Speaking of supporting my channel, I need to say thank you to my fantastic super techie and ultra techie supporters. I really appreciate everything you do to support the channel. Thanks to you, I'm able to continue to make these educational videos in my evenings and on weekends. Thank you so much.